On innumerable occasions, we have heard and at times seen people tripping, falling from steps or a ladder and getting their bones broken, at times gravely injuring themselves and at times escaping with minor bruises. Some falls even end up being fatal. But you know what is weird? When we hear this miraculous one in a million insane survival stories of people who fall from an airplane in the sky, get up, dust off and live to tell the tale. This video is about six such people who survived the impossible. Vesna Vulovic was a 23-year-old flight attendant on Yugoslav Airlines which was en route from Stockholm to Belgrade on the 26 Jan 1972. When the aircraft was at 33,000 feet, a bomb exploded in the front cargo area, breaking the plane into two pieces. The plane crashed against snowed slope of a mountain in Czechoslovakia. The Yugoslav government blamed a nationalist group a stage for the terrorist act. All the passengers and the crew died in the crash except for Vesna Vulovic. Although her condition was critical, she was miraculously found alive. At the time of the blast, she was at the rear part of the plane and one of the catering trolleys pinned her against the wall, preventing her from being sucked out of the plane during the fall. The tail cone of the plane was intact during the fall and when the tail impacted against the snowed slopes, it did so at such an angle that it made the debris slip on the snow slopes. Vesna spent 27 days in coma and when she came out of coma, she first asked the doctor for a cigarette. She had no memory of the crash. She recovered fully after 17 months and continued to fly with Yugoslav Airlines for 20 more years. She holds the Guinness World Record for the highest free fall without a parachute and Paul McCartney awarded her the prize in a ceremony in London. South African Christine McKenzie was a veteran skydiver who was on her 112th jump and then everything that could possibly go wrong did. As she was falling from a height of 11,000 feet, she pulled her ripcord to open the parachute. To her horror, she discovered that the main chute failed to deploy. But skydivers generally have a reserve chute for a backup. So she released the backup and yep, you guessed it, that too failed. As she was hurtling towards a certain death at 100 miles per hour, she crashed into power cables which helped to slow her impact to the ground. The power cables broke her fall and she found herself still alive after flopping to the ground below. When the other jumpers landed with their parachutes, they immediately rushed towards the crash site fearing the worst. But instead, they were pleasantly shocked to discover Christine actually talking and even cracking jokes. Christine suffered mild bruises and a cracked pelvis. Now just imagine if an aircraft is struck by lightning mid-air at a height of around 10,000 feet and breaks up into two and plummets down to earth. What would be your chances of survival if one were a passenger who is strapped to her seat with a seat belt? Close to zilch or I would say extremely improbable, right? Well, this is exactly what happened with Miss Julianne Koep who was traveling with her mother in the ill-fated commercial airliner around the Peruvian rainforest in December 1971. Not only did Julianne survive the crash, but what's more unbelievable is that she got away with just a broken collarbone, a gash to her right arm and a swollen right eye. Unfortunately for her, her mother did not survive the crash nor did the 91 other passengers and the crew of the aircraft. As if this was not challenging enough, she had to survive close to 9 days through thick forests with very little food before she reached civilization wading through knee-high water streams. Julianne moved to Germany after this near-death experience, became a biologist 
received a doctorate and in later years went back to Peru to conduct research. Equally astounding is the survival of Bahia Bakari, a 15-year-old French schoolgirl who was traveling in the Yemenia flight that crashed into the Indian Ocean near the north coast of Comoros in June 2009. Unfortunately, all the other 151 passengers and the crew of the ill-fated aircraft died in the crash except Bahia. Bahia had to overcome another challenge as she barely knew how to swim and did not have a life vest. She somehow managed to hold on to the wreckage of the aircraft for around 13 hours before she was rescued by a private ship. She was totally exhausted after the ordeal and could not cling on to the life preserver thrown to her from the ship's deck. One of the sailors had to jump overboard and hand her a float and then she was pulled up to the ship safely. Nicholas Alchemade was a 21-year-old flight surgeon and a member of RAF during the Second World War. In March 1944, Nick was flying to the east of Germany when his plane was attacked by the Germans and got struck. The plane caught fire and spiraled out of control. As his parachute had caught fire, Nick decided that jumping to his death would be a faster and less painful death rather than getting burnt in the aircraft. He jumped from 18,000 feet above the ground, but luckily his fall was broken by pine trees and he landed on the soft snow covering on the ground below. To his utter surprise, he was able to move his arms and legs and only had a sprained leg. He was subsequently captured by the Germans who were so impressed with his survival tale that they gave him a certificate testifying the same. In June 1963, Marine Lieutenant Cliff Judkins was in a F-8 Crusader over the Pacific when the automatic shutoff wall failed and the fuel bladder burst. As the fighter jet caught fire, Cliff tried to eject out of it, but the ejection mechanism was malfunctioning. He was left with very little choice than to jump out. In the past, nobody had ever successfully bailed out of a Crusader as its vertical stabilizer would effectively cut any human body in half. Cliff somehow managed to successfully avoid being decapitated, but his troubles were far from over. His parachute wouldn't open and he was falling from 15,000 feet into the Pacific at 110 miles per hour speed. The parachute finally opened just as he hit the water and he survived with broken ankles a fractured pelvis and back, and a partially collapsed lung. Four years before this incident, Cliff had his spleen removed after a bad car accident. His doctors told him after the fall from the F-8 that if he still had his spleen, he would not have survived the fall from the F-8 as it would have ruptured due to the velocity of the impact. So I guess those who are destined to live, nothing, absolutely nothing, not even a fall from an airplane can kill them. I hope you enjoyed the stories as much as I enjoyed narrating them. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next.